Alan Lane is director of the TWI Insta Institute, U USA Southern Region. With over 30 years of diverse manufacturing experience, Alan Lane is a strong leader recognized for improving manufacturing competitiveness, leading change and developing staff potential. Alan's previous positions include operations manager, director of quality and continuous improvement coordinator for both small and large companies in union and non-union settings. His experience crosses a wide variety of industries, including aluminium can making, labels, folding cartons, electronic devices, and paperboard container production. Take it away, Alan. Okay, thank you very much, Jane. I appreciate that. Greetings, everyone. In this presentation, uh, we're going to cover the items that you see coming up on your screen. And by the end of this presentation, I am sure that you will have further questions. So information on how to contact me directly will be provided. So let's talk about and let's get started what this whole TWI Institute Southern Region is all about. So in mid-19, I'm sorry, mid-2018, I was fortunate to be asked to open the TWI Institute South. This is a satellite of the TWI Institute in Liverpool, New York. The Southern office is here to serve the Southeast region of the US. As you can see, I'm busily engaged in trying to make as many companies as I can aware of the TWI methodology, as well as introduce the newly released TWI 2018 Training Management System International Standard. TWI is the acronym that stands for Training Within Industry. The methodology was developed during World War II to resolve the issue of training people unfamiliar with manufacturing processes to be able to produce large quantities of quality war goods, everything from guns and bullets to airplanes and ships. Many credit TWI with winning the war because we were able to outproduce the enemy. Resurrected in uh, 2001, the methodology has uh, quietly spread to over 25 countries on four continents and proven to be just as effective today as it was 70 years ago. So what is TWI? TWI is geared towards training supervisors. In this context, TWI defines a supervisor as anyone who directs the work of others. As can be seen on this slide, TWI is ideal to support lean manufacturing principles like standard work that drives increased productivity and improved quality. But more importantly, TWI drives good employee-supervisor relations. Obviously, a pleasant workplace with mutual respect for supervisors and workers is generally a much more productive workplace. There are five TWI modules. Job instruction, quickly training employees to do a job correctly, safely, and conscientiously. There is JR, which building upon, uh, uh, builds positive employee relations, increasing cooperation and motivation, and effectively resolving conflict. Job methods is actually the improving part, and it is the continuous improvement initiative, improving the way jobs are done uh, to ensure that they are done the best way possible. Job safety, creating a, job, a nice safe workplace, uh, provides a framework for supervisors to engage employees in identifying potential hazards. And that's really the uh, primary intent of JS is to head safety issues off before they, are, uh, before they occur. Problem solving is the most recent method that has been developed. And it really combines all of the other uh, job uh, instruction, job relations, job methods um, together. And it utilizes those as a natural progression when you're solving problems. So let's look at what the future holds. So sometimes, even with the best of intentions and the most highly skilled supervisors, training exceptional employees, the training fails to yield the results we want. Or worse yet, doesn't stick, and we revert back to the old way we always did it. And this is the reason I stopped and asked why. And my conclusion after significant research, study, and reflection was that training wasn't being managed the same way all the other key performance indicators were. So when you talk about managing a 
uh, uh, business, you generally refer to the guidebook, commonly referred to in most companies as the quality manual. And as a quality management system, we're talking about documenting the way that we work. The globally accepted benchmark for this kind of system is ISO 9001-2015 standard, most recent one. 9001 is the generic model of what a world-class management system should look like. But are there others? Of course there are. Pretty much every product family or service has a specific ISO standard to address what should be done to achieve world-class status. Alas, when I went looking for a training standard, I didn't find one. So I wrote one. So let's, let's start and let's look at this whole training management system thing a little bit. Let me start with this section by uh, asking you a series of questions. So the first question I would ask is, shouldn't training be meaningful? Second question I would ask is, wouldn't you like your training to directly affect your KPIs? Third question, should employees be trained the same way? In other words, should, they, should there be standard work? And the last question that I'll ask is, do you want training to stick? In other words, do you want training to sustain the gains that were achieved when you first trained your people? If, as I suspect, you agree that these attributes of training would be worthwhile, then why is training treated like a redheaded stepchild and kept in the attic? Why don't we manage training that just like we manage our other critical to the business key performance indicators? That's what this standard is all about. TWI is not, and our standard is not, uh, trying to uniformly get you to comply with the structure that we have. Um, let me just look at this here. Yeah, missed one slide, so we'll have to edit that a little bit. Let me start again. So it is not the intent of this standard to imply the need for uniformity in the structure of different quality management systems. It's not necessary to align the documentation to the clause structure of this standard or any other. And it's, the, and it's not intended to be used as specific technology uh, of this international standard within the organization. This standard was developed and uh, the requirements of are intended to be complementary to the organization, organization's current quality management system for product and service realization. So now, let's look briefly at the heart of the standard. Everything we do is a process. Whether it's getting ready for work in the morning or running a business, we first must understand how that process works. To develop a new process, first, we must plan how it should work. Next, we put that plan into play. Then, we need to check to see if that process actually did what we intended it to do. If it's not 100%, we need to act on what we learned. This is the basis of continuous improvement. And don't you want your people to improve? This standard was written to address this exact issue. And by implementing the various clause requirements in the standard, you can identify and hire the right people. You can uh, get appropriate and effective onboarding of those folks, new as well as refresher training, adequate succession planning, supervisor skills and knowledge training, effective problem solving, and ongoing and effective safety training in the work and have a safe workplace. The TWI 2018 standard is based on ISO 9001 2015 version. This was completely intentional, plus a little easier, as ISO sets the bar for management system standards. If you are already ISO registered, you're about 90% compliant to the TWI 2018 training standard. If you do not have a quality management system, the TWI 2018 standard could be used to develop one. It is specifically geared towards training, but is generic enough to make it easily adaptable for any process. So let's look at what the standard is all about. As you can see in this slide, clauses one through three are just like ISO and are the administrivia stuff you need to ensure buy-in and understanding. Clauses 4 through 10 is the meat of the standard, and again, mimics ISO 2015 in both topic and sequence. 
Keep in mind, this was done to make it easy to understand and relate to ISO, the world-class bar setting standards. This standard specifies requirements for a training system that complements the organization's basic quality management system when an organization needs to demonstrate the ability to adequately and effectively and efficiently train its workers. It also aims to enhance customer satisfaction. Well-trained people produce good quality products and services. So pretty much any management system standard out there, whether for manufacturing, for food service, for software development, whatever, requires that you have documented evidence of employee training competency. None of them tell you how, and this again is intentional and is addressed in the planning clause of the TWI standard. Examples of PDA cycles are readily available. Just Google PDCA and you can find hundreds of examples. Pick one you like. Everything that is uh, in the PDCA cycle was also utilized to uh, develop this standard. And again, everything we do is a process. Here's a quick slide to show a typical process map. If I were to do a little pro bono coaching at this point, I would highly recommend using process maps to document your processes, as opposed to work instructions that nobody ever really reads. The basic formula to define a process can be seen in the lower left-hand corner. It reads, Y is a function of X. Y being outputs, and X being the various inputs to the process that produces the product or service. All processes require planning, necessary inputs, resources to provide the stuff that you work with, and instructions, which includes training. The TWI 2018 standard identifies the need for all of these things. Uh, the high level structure follows the ISO 9001 2015 structure, again, purposely and intentionally. It starts with context, understanding the organization and its context. This is one of the most difficult concepts for people to understand, even in ISO 9001 2015. Context can be very confusing. Suffice it to say that it's basically the understanding of external context can be facilitated by considering issues arising from legal technological, competitive, market, cultural, social, and economic environments, whether international, national, regional, or local. Understanding the internal context can be facilitated by considering issues related to values, culture, knowledge, and performance of the organization. Issues can include positive and negative factors for conditions for consideration. Suffice it to say that you need to understand what your organization is and who is interested in it. Clause five, this is a big one. This is leadership and it is one of the most important clauses, both in ISO and in the training management standard. Top management needs to demonstrate leadership and commitment with respect to the training management system by taking accountability for the effectiveness of that training system and ensuring that the quality policy and the quality objectives are established for the training system and are compatible with the context and strategic direction of the organization. This in turn ensures the integration of the training system requirements into the quality management system. It needs to be an integral part of the company's culture. Treated just like any other process considered critical to the success of the business. The planning stage, when planning for the training management system, the organization needs to consider the issues referred to um, in the context section and determine the risks and opportunities. Very much like ISO, this training management system standard has been uh, developed using risk assessment and it asks specifically that you address those things that can potentially harm or, or the opposite uh, aid in the terms of your training system. They need to have assurance that the training system system can achieve its intended results. 
enhance desirable effects, prevent or reduce undesirable effects, and achieve improvement. Actions taken to address risks and opportunities need to be proportionate to the potential impact on the organization's ability to meet the customer requirements for conformity of product and services. The support clause. The organization needs to determine and provide and maintain the resources needed for the effective implementation of its training management system and for the operation and controls of its training. The organization shall consider the capabilities of and the constraints of existing internal resources and also what needs to be obtained from external resources if you have outside training. In terms of operation, the organization needs to plan and implement and control the training processes. And those are the ones needed to meet the requirements for the effective and efficient training of employees and to implement the actions determined in Clause 6 by determining the requirements for the training of employees' needs, establishing criteria for the training process, and the acceptance of competency of the training performed. In terms of training performance evaluation, when it comes to measuring competency, the organization needs to determine, as related to the training, what needs to be monitored, what needs to be measured and evaluated and analyzed. The organization also needs to monitor the trainees' perceptions of the degree to which their needs and expectations of training have been fulfilled. The organization needs to analyze and evaluate appropriate data and information arising from the monitoring and measurement of the training process. The organization shall conduct internal audits at planned intervals to provide information on whether the training management system conforms to the organization's own requirements for its training management system. The requirements of this international standard is effectively implemented and maintained. And above all, top management shall review the organization's training management system at planned intervals. This is another added agenda item in the management review. And finally, improvement. The organization needs to determine and select opportunities for improvement and implement any necessary actions to meet customer requirements and enhance customer satisfaction. This is both internal and external customers the internal customers, predominantly those people being trained. These shall include improved, improving the training to meet requirements as well as to address future needs and expectations, correcting, preventing, or reducing undesired effects, and also improving the performance and effectiveness of that training management system. That was an awful lot uh, to absorb, and it was only just a very brief introduction. So let's review the highlights. The formal TWI 2018 Training Management System International Standard Certification, which is available, will allow a company to benefit from these things. Shorter training time has been proven over uh, the last 70 years. Uh, there's a lot of examples. You can go on to the TWI website. That is www.twi-institute.org. Standard processes for training employees relate directly back to lean manufacturing principles. It's proven that it reduces turnover. The employee and supervisor relationships are significantly improved. When you have happier workers and you have better trained workers, you automatically have less scrap, higher quality, greater productivity, less machine downtime, etc. If you choose to take your company to a level of certification, there is an international recognition. Your company would be listed on the TWI Institute website as being a certified company. It also offers you a sustained tra training process. And one of the things that I found uh, that was most disturbing when I started to do this kind of training was that uh, consulting people will come in, they will train, they will see some instant results, they will port, report the results on an annual basis, but they're not there for a year. Well, if you go back and look after the end of the year, tremendous number of those uh, training initiatives have failed and the company has reverted back to the way it's always been done. 
So this, there was no sustainment of the new initiative that was trained. The TWI uh, 2018 requires a company's senior leadership to embrace standardizing the training process and making sustained effective training a part of the overall company strategy. This gets into the cultural issue and training should be an integral part of the company's culture. I have stated several times that I don't care what business you are in, regardless of the business that you're in, you are also in the training business. The estimated time frame for a company to fully implement and achieve the certification is roughly about six months. This would be for an average size company, 150 employees-ish. So, I know that there will be questions, and here's the contact information. This is Alan Lane. I am the director of the TWI Institute, USA Southern Region. There is a website uh, that is potentially there for you to access. That is www tdtwi.institute, I'm sorry, dash institute, USA, southern region, dot org. My email address, direct email address, is alan, alan, at newslow.com. So if you are interested in anything further, any questions, I know that there are, please feel free to contact me at any time, and I will be happy to start that conversation. Thank you very much. For your, for your time. Uh, thank you, Alan. Um, that concludes today's presentation. Thank you for watching.